Makers, it's Mrs. B, and I'm here with another journal mini lesson. Today, we are going to be focusing on the decision that you can make to include images in your journal entries. This is also something that can help you throughout the rest of your life as a writer. Anytime you want to share or explain something to someone, it's always a good idea to consider including some images. So to get us started, I thought we'd talk about the reasons why writers include images. And the first one that I came up with is that writers include images because they want to add visual details. Writers obviously are always including words, but sometimes including something that we see with our eyes that is not words, that image that um, or picture really adds an additional level of details that can be really super helpful to readers. So that's the first reason. And let me actually show you an example of a time when I included um, images um, to one of my journal entries to help my readers understand. So on April 10th, it was the first time I had gone to the grocery store after um, they had put some more safety precautions in place. And I wrote about how I needed to wait in line to go inside, how many of the aisles were one way, how things were missing from the shelves, and how we had to stand six tiles apart at the checkout. Um, but I also snapped some photos while I was in the grocery store, and I decided to include those in my journal as well, because I was thinking that someone reading this in the future that wasn't a part of these shutdowns, um, it might be hard for them to picture that um, in their mind, and having those images or those photographs would really help them create a more clear and robust picture um, in their mind. So that's a choice I made as a writer. Another reason why writers include images is they use an image to really help capture the story. Sometimes um, when writers are using an image in this way, the image becomes almost more important than the writing. Let me show you an example of this. Um, I found this picture on Prime Focus Lab when it was talking about the decision sometimes to have a picture all by itself and just include a few words to tell the rest of the story, um, or whether the picture can um, stand alone. So that's something interesting to think about. Um, and usually we capture the story, um, and it's like not just the photo all by itself. I so I say this little almost. It's just the photo um, because we do like to give our readers a little bit of background knowledge to help them piece that story together or understand um, the context or you know where and why um, it's taking place. But that can be a really powerful decision um, as, a, as a writer when you're thinking about including images. The last reason um, that I thought about, I'm really excited to share this with you. Um, sometimes writers, um, they design an image to actually create or tell the story. So it's not something that they just happen to see and be there in that moment and they're able to capture it, to document that moment in time. They actually create the image to document that moment in time. And let me tell you, let me show you this. So um, shortly after we started learning together at home, um, I saw this post from this art teacher whose name is Libby Beatty. Uh, or Libby Beatty, I'm not exactly sure how to say her name, but um, what she did is she came up with this really great idea to have her kids create portraits, to create images where they thought, um, where they were recording um, how they're spending their days and the images, um, excuse me, the, the items that have been important to them during virtual learning. And look at how the different kids created this image to tell the story by putting different items around them. Okay. So I thought that was a really neat idea and I thought someday I'm going to have to share that with my writers because that might be something they want to do in their journals. So that leads me to the next part of our mini lesson. As always, you have to decide what do I want to share with my future self and my future readers today? And do you want to include images? Okay, and that's where, here it comes, always it's there. That's where you, as always, get to make that choice, okay? Maybe 
you already have something in mind and it doesn't include images today. And that's completely okay. Because remember, including images isn't just something you're doing today because Mrs. B is asking you to. Including images um, in your writing is something that you could do today and every day or today or another day. It's a lifelong thing that you, a lifelong choice for writers, okay? Here are a couple of um, things, little prompts, thinking prompts that I thought might be helpful to you. If you decide, if you're um, contemplating, you're thinking like, do I want to include images? So you might say like, hmm, I know I wanna write about how could images um, or pictures, or even a video clip is a type of um, an image. Um, how could images help me tell this, um, this, this day, this event in my journal, okay? Maybe you're saying, hmm, should I revise? Should I go back to an entry that I've already written and include images? Maybe I want to add a drawing, and drawing is also a type of image. You could totally make that choice to go back and revise. You might say, I want to tell a new story. I really want to include um, this really powerful photograph um, that I've taken during this time and just add a few words. Okay? Or, I want to do what Libby Beatty's students did, and I want to create this image and put items around me that have been really important, okay? And then you have to decide if you're going to do one of these things. Do you need to add words to help your future writer, excuse me, your future reader understand what it is that you're trying to do? Those are your choices, writers, okay? So it's that time. Grab your paper journal or your digital journal and find that cozy spot. Think about what you wanna write about today and think about whether you or not you want to include images. Okay, So that's it for today. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I hope that some of you will share um, your, uh, your journals with me, especially if you try this on. I just am dying to see what kids come up with. So that's it for this time. Have a great rest of the day. I'm saying it again because I mean it doubly. <laughs> and um, it's time to say goodbye. So off you go.